Dutch politics is sort of like a weather bell for politics in other European countries because the Netherlands has the most open electoral system uh, of Europe. All kinds of new developments manifest themselves first in the Netherlands. So what you'll be seeing in the Netherlands might be a development that might come to your country in the coming years as well. Hello and welcome to Reactives Beyond the Byline podcast. I am Evi Kiori, and in this episode we're diving into the upcoming Dutch elections. Who can win the race? What will the election result bring to the Dutch and the European Union? This Wednesday, November 22nd, the Dutch are heading to the polls to vote in a snap parliamentary election. For the first time in 16 years, Mark Rutte, the previous prime minister whose government collapsed in July, is not running. This election is a chance for the country to move past a history of difficult problems and scandals from the previous governments led by Rutte. Internationally, this change in leadership might mean the end of the Netherlands playing a key role in making deals within the European Union. The Dutch political scene is a bit messy and unpredictable at the moment, with potentially up to 16 parties winning seats in Parliament. But why is this election considered to be a landmark for the Netherlands? There are certainly landmark elections in the sense that for the first time in uh, uh, 16 years, we'll be voting for a new prime minister. Sarah de Lange is professor of political pluralism at the University of Amsterdam. Of course, Mar- Mark Rutte has uh, resigned, um, which means that now there is an open playing field for Uh, Almost all the parties that are competing have new political leaders. um, And that makes the elections very interesting because it's very unclear at this stage uh, what the outcome will be. And what is the political landscape in the Netherlands? Which are the frontrunners, the plausible alliances and the emerging trends that are shaping the country's political environment? Well, the Netherlands has always had a very fragmented party system with many parties competing for uh, spots in parliament. In the previous uh, elections, there were 17 parties that got elected. Um, In the current elections, the campaign is really between four or five parties that are polling high And many of the other parties that have been in Parliament in the past uh, are doing uh, poorly and are not that relevant to the campaign. So these elections are really about a competition uh, between one left-wing party. Uh, It's a, a cooperation between the Greens and the Labour Party. They are running under one list led by uh, former uh, EC commissioner uh, Franz Timmermans, and then a series of right-wing parties, um, starting with a new party, um, National Social Contract, which has been founded by a former MP from uh, the Christian Democrats. Um, Then we have uh, the recently uh, founded... uh, Uh, farmer citizen movement that did particularly well in the previous uh, regional elections in the Netherlands. We have, uh, of course, former Prime Minister Rutte's party VVD, which is currently led by Dylan Jezelgas. And last but not least, we, of course, have Geert Wilders' populist radical right party for freedom. And the race is really between these parties at the moment. With 150 members of parliament in the Dutch parliament, a majority of 76 seats is required to form a government. Given the historical pattern, no single party has ever achieved this, leading to a tradition of coalition governments lasting over a century. Elections for the parliament occur every four years or earlier in the event of government collapses, just like this time, using a proportional representation system. Parties securing at least 0.67% of the vote are guaranteed a seat based on an approved list of candidates in a single nationwide constituency. Simultaneously, the 75 members of the Senate are elected every four years by the Netherlands' 12 provincial councils. To enact new legislation, a government must secure majority support in the upper house. 
Recent decades have witnessed a notable decline in support for the traditional centre-right and the left parties in Dutch politics, shrinking from 80% in the 1980s to just over 40% today. This trend mirrors a broader European shift. In the Netherlands, though, it has conceded with a remarkable surge in the numbers of smaller parties. While 17 parties are currently represented in the outgoing parliament, 26 are contending in the current elections, and up to 18 could potentially secure at least one seat. So which parties are speaking to the Dutch people's hearts and are leading this race? Who could win these elections? This is uh, changing all the time in the polls. Um, Polls in the Netherlands are very volatile because Dutch electors only decide on their vote very last minute, sometimes even only when they get to the voting booth. So we've seen a lot of fluctuations in the polls. Initially, it looked like this would be a competition between this new party, NSE of Peter Omtzigt and the VVD. Um, But the latest polls show that there is actually a lot more strategic voting likely to take place, you know, with citizens voting for parties because they don't want a right-wing government. And now there is competition, especially between the VVD, um, the Alliance of the Greens and Labour, um, and Geert Wilders PPV for the first place. So this new party, NSC, has been slowly declining in the polls over the past week. As the political landscape in the Netherlands unfolds, the current campaign is centered around a spectrum of critical issues. But which are the topics that the Dutch are looking for solutions and what are the political campaigns promising? So the the campaign is about a couple of issues in the Netherlands. So one, of course, like in many other European countries as well, is the cost of living crisis. Um, it's about the affordability of energy, of health care. It's about the very substantial shortage of housing in the Netherlands and the very high prices, both in the rental market and the buyer's market. Um, and on that issue, the competition is really between the left, so the, the alliance of the Greens and Labour, and the more right-wing parties, especially uh, the VVD of uh, former Prime Minister Rutte. Other issues that are also particularly salient are immigration. Almost all of the right-wing parties significantly want to reduce immigration, um, but the competition is about what kind of re- immigration we can reduce. So the new party of Peter Omtzigt, NSA, wants to reduce immigration for the labor market and from international students. So it's very much about socioeconomic migration, whereas, for example, the VVD and, of course, Geert Wilders, PVV, really want to reduce asylum seekers and people coming from for family reunification. And indeed, Mark Rutte's previous government crumbled over the asylum seekers bill. Will this be the topic that will make or break the upcoming Dutch government? Well, it really depends on, on which parties will cooperate after the elections. In the previous government, the tension emerged from the fact that there were two conservative parties uh, in the government, the Christian Democrats and and former Prime Minister Rutte's VVD, and two more progressive parties when it comes to immigration issues. So those were the Christian Union and D66, the Social Liberals. So from the outset, it was very clear that these parties would have a difficult time agreeing on immigration policy. Now, in these elections, the electoral weight, the preferences of citizens are clearly much more on the right when it comes to immigration. So there are three parties that seriously want to reduce immigration doing well, whereas the parties that are for more hospitable policies are doing less well in the campaign. The Dutch will not only be voting for a new government, but they will also be voting for someone to fill into Mark Rutte's shoes. Professor De Lang, who of the candidates would you say is standing out and why? The most prominent candidate in the campaign is, of course, this new politician, Peter Omtzigt. His party is popular because of its more centrist position, which, of course, appeals to voters of both the left and the right. But it is especially popular because he is seen as a very 
principled, transparent, uh, and honest politician, and also as a defender of citizens against the state. So he played a very important role in dealing with the child benefit scandal that took place under the uh, leadership of Prime Minister Rutte, and that has made him immensely popular. However, he has been rather vague throughout the campaign as to whether he is willing to become prime minister if his party were to be the largest. As election day approaches, the decision-making process for many voters takes center stage, accompanied by an acknowledgement that the polls may not entirely capture the final outcome. But what is in store for the next day of the elections? What can the Dutch expect? For election day, um, many voters will be deciding uh, on their vote. Uh, so um, we can't uh, promise that the polls actually will reflect the outcome. The outcome will also depend a little bit on turnout. In previous years, turnout has been very high in the Netherlands, about 80% of citizens vote. But currently, there's a lot of distrust in politics and dissatisfaction with political parties uh, as organizations. So it might be the case that turnout is lower, um, which might affect some parties more than others. Um, so that will in itself determine the outcome. Subsequently, it's already clear that there will be at least three parties, if not four parties needed for a government coalition. So the coalition negotiations are likely to take very long for that reason alone. And this election isn't important only for the national politics, but also for the role of the Netherlands in the EU and its relations with the rest of the Union, as many analysts expect the outcome of the election to influence the relations between the two parties. So many of the right-wing leaning parties have a more Eurosceptic position um, than the previous government, especially also this new party by Peter Umtzigt is quite Eurosceptic in some regards. And many of the measures that they would like to take against the influx of immigrants is not really possible within the existing EU uh, legislative frameworks. So they will be pushing back against these kinds of regulations at the European level. I think it also will have a wider impact on international politics because many of these right-leaning parties are very pro-Israel. So also in that conflict, it will impact government policy most likely. Thank you very much. I am Evi Kiori, and this was your Active Spion the Byline podcast. Visit your Active to stay on top of the latest news, sign up to our podcast newsletter, and if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, you can do so on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever it is that you listen to your podcast. Thank you for tuning in, and until next week. Your Active is part of the Trust Project.